interesting discussion was brought up by Barstool Sports, actually, and it had to do with baseball, but we're not going to apply it all to baseball. We're going to apply it to all sports altogether. Uh, and the question was, does your team have to be great to win the MVP? Re, uh, reworded would be, if your team sucks, can you still win the MVP? Uh, so I don't think this is actually something that is specific to one sport. I think the overall theme is, historically, MVPs are one by usually a great player on a great team. Mm -hmm. Rarely is it a good player on the best team, or is it a a ungodly or a godlike talent on a terrible team? Mm -hmm. It's that great player, great team uh, combination that works. Steph Curry and the Warriors, LeBron James in the Heat, Kevin Durant in the Thunder, Kobe Bryant in the Lakers, Shaq in the Lakers, Timmy D in the Spurs, like. All those teams, one, two, three seasons. You just mentioned all baseball, basketball players. I, I'm not done. Sport. Cam Newton in the Panthers, Tom Brady in the Patriots, Cristiano Ronaldo and the Real Madrids, Messi's and the Barcelonas, uh, nice. Bryce Harper in the Nationals, Clayton Kershaw in the Dodgers, Henrik Lundqvist in the New York Rangers, the mm. Celtic Rangers. Got it. Yeah, the, it's the, the Scotland Rangers, Celtic Rangers. Uh, the Celtic Rangers. The point being, Someone is outraged. Uh, usually they're finishing in the top one, two, three seeds of their respective conferences, making title runs, or if it's a different sport that doesn't have seeding, finishing at the top of their tables. Mm -hmm. Rarely do you see, if ever, or rarely will you see, wow, Jack Butland had a great year. Give him the Ballon d'Or. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even, uh, yeah <laughs> it's such it's, a random, I can go even further. Like, uh, hmm, I'm trying to think. Uh, I need a player, Dan. I need a good player. Nick Stauskas, who <laughs> had the best year of his career, yeah. given the MVP. The point being, Francis, what do you think is the bottom line for your team? You need to be, the, you need to be in the conversation. What's just in the conversation for a title? Yeah, you need to be in the conversation. So if that's the case, a conversation for the title, that would mean that any team that makes the playoffs, or uh, I guess a quarterfinals in their... Mm. respective sports, uh, they would be an optimal choice for MVP. So, so it really depends, right? Because so like, if you're uh, in the conversation, you're in the playoffs. Yeah, so an NBA sp is weird because you have a regular season MVP. So like that is kind of like, because you don't know that if the Golden State Warriors are the re best team in the regular season, they might not go on and win it. So there's a regular okay. season MVP. So yeah, like if you're given that MVP award, more often than not, you're going to take it from the team that is in the conversation that's going to go through into the playoffs. But in world football... Um, it's such a close-knit call. I'm not saying that the NBA isn't, but it's specifically in the last five years where it's been between two major players for the most, for the highest accolade. At times, the only way to differentiate is by the trophies at the end. It's impossible to differentiate. Both of them can have such oh, so a phenomenal year. So the team award year. affects the individual. Yeah, so exactly. So like Ronaldo and Messi, in this example, have been so close with their attributes for five, six years. Like I'm talking about goals apart. Goals, like three or four goals sometimes either way. That when it comes down to it, these guys, who if they're not already bald, will be bald by the end of the conversation when they're like, how do we separate how these two guys? How dare you? And then at the end they're like, ah well, Messi won the La Liga this year and uh, Ronaldo didn't. That's it. That's the only way you can kind of yeah, differentiate. That's very true. Uh, I'm going to bring it back to basketball. My feeling is, uh, it, this was taken out of context because it was exaggerated in one of our last clips. If you make the playoffs, even if you're an eight seed, you should be eligible for an MVP especially if you average numbers that are simply outstanding in leading your team. Uh, baseball, historically, no. Uh, Doc Holliday won Cy Young Awards, Best Pitcher in Baseball Award, uh, which is kind of like your MVP of, of pitchers. Uh, even though pitchers in the past have won an MVP award, Clayton Kershaw, uh, it's rare that it happens. Doc Holliday was on the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays were not making playoffs at all during that time. Uh, and Roy Halladay was still the best pitcher in the American League, therefore he won that respective award. Um, in the NFL, it's usually pretty clear cut, but I don't think people take the MVP award as seriously in the NFL as they do the NBA or uh, the, the, the 13 baseball fans left in the world take oh. watching baseball because I look at it and like it just seems like Tom Brady, when he threw for, like there was no question during the height of Tom Brady and Peyton Manning's careers, like, Quarterback, most important position, 
they're going to win the MVP. They're putting up the insane numbers. And then Aaron Rodgers came along, had a ridiculous season. Cam Newton came along, had a ridiculous season. It's it's a quarterback award. Oh, quarterback. It's yeah. a quarterback award. And that's maybe the, the bigger discussion is we should have in a clip is maybe like why these defensive players never win these Well, they accolades. have defensive player of the yeah, year. Yeah, and it's, but it's never really the same. It's like the same, the argument going back to football, Manuel Neuer has a year where he wins a World Cup and he still can't, he, he's in the conversation, but he can't seem to break that boundary. And I that's think true. in the NFL is that, it is often going to be very quantifiable. Like, it's a lot okay. easier to break down Cam Newton's running yards and he's, he's, how many touchdowns and it is to try and uh, compare to a Von Miller and how many tackles he has, even though that is what happened in the Super Bowl. But for the regular season MVP is that more often than not, you're trying to just quantify what it counts for. And I think that in the NBA, it's a specific animal. I think that is one where you could, I know you mentioned at the start, it's in general. I think that you've got to put the NBA at the side is I think it's easier more than any other sports for someone in the NBA to win the MVP, regular season MVP, without actually being on the best quality team or the highest winning team. And I say that because when, I, when you have a five-person sport, it's easier to influence a game as one person. As one person. Yeah, and that's what I think if you have Russell Westbrook this yep. year averaging close to a triple-double, I'm not saying he'll do it for the full season. Jason says he's got a good chance at doing it, I and I think so. Um, but if he has an outstanding season and the OKC finishes maybe fifth or sixth, He's got a great chance at winning it because a great player can carry a pretty bad team. Take, for instance, LeBron James and the Cavaliers his first time around in the NBA. Help carry a decent, uh, a poor team, sorry. Help carry help make the... It, help, like, make it, help make a poor team an overall great Francis, team. Francis, he helped carry the second worst team to ever make the NBA Finals. So, therefore, it, it, that, it kind of bodes into my argument. Is, uh, in the NBA, I think that it is slightly specific. Basket, baseball, maybe so. Because if you are an out unbelievable hitter and you're hitting non-stop like your 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 stats alone can still help push you to a certain degree baseball writers drive me crazy though uh and here's a random example take pudge rodriguez winning the mvp over pedro martinez pedro martinez the 312 strikeouts the most unhittable season i've ever seen in my entire life from a pitcher and it was given to pudge rodriguez i'm pretty sure that year like Sammy Sosa didn't win an MVP after hitting 63 home runs and 150 something RBIs. Mm. These are all just numbers, again. But still, and that at the time was Sammy Sosa, one of the most favorited players in, in baseball. And then steroids and all that stuff happened. But uh, I think the answer is you have to be in contention, which means for every respective sport, if it's a sport that includes a playoffs, you have to be in that conversation. If yeah. you are a the 12th seed in the NBA, or you are so far, if you're below 500 record overall on a sport, or eighth on the table, you're not even the consideration, even if you're breaking records. I think if your team's winning at that point, or is the number one team, that's the deal breaker if everyone's really close, right? Because if you're so far ahead in your statistics, if you've averaged nearly a triple-double for the season, you're Russell Westbrook, and you're uh, up against Steph Curry, who's averaged a great season, and his team has got an overall unbelievable record, you'll probably still get a great chance at winning it. But if you're very close with Steph Curry and your statistics and Steph's in the number one seed and Russ is in the number four seed, you're going to give it to Steph because that's just a deal breaker. Best so player, best I team. think that's one of the, the better ways to differentiate is that when your team's winning, if it's very close and, and amongst, amongst a bunch of players, the winning team will be the deal breaker. Uh, I think, ju uh, just like James Harrison said, sarcasm, uh, everyone gets a participation award. <laughs> Here you go. Is this for participating? so good today. You get the MVP at TYT Sports for the day. Comment below, does your team have to be great to win an MVP, or can you win an MVP if your team sucks? Really, the same question, just phrased two different ways. At JasonRuman91, at Brent's underscore Maxwell. All the good stuff is in the description box below, and we'll see you after the Labor Day weekend. I think this couple of weeks that time. We hope you enjoy your holiday, and uh, we'll be back on Tuesday.